Okay, I think we're going to go. The way we're going to do this um, so that we can manage the, all the tables is we are just going to go from table to table. So you can go in any order, and whoever at that table where there's a mic wants to stand up and, and talk about and just tell us what do you want to know more about. It's a room-wide lightning round, so you only get a couple of seconds so that we can hear a lot of voices. Sophia, you all set? You want to go, go ahead? Yeah. Sure. Uh, design principles and others using the applications of those design principles. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I'd like to know more about the way that uh, to integrate the early college program within a traditional high school model. Uh, I think I'd like to know more about, um, I know you've talked about it, but to become a STEM school in North Carolina, would you have to go by all that criteria? And I've also been told in one of the sessions that uh, to do be STEM, you have to do the science, technology, engineering, and math all together integrated. Mm -hmm. And then I've heard that, no, you can just do others. So I'm still confused <laughs> about that. Just specifically to stand up. Oh my God. <laughs> Specifically to Durham um, Public Schools, I was interested in how they dealt with transportation, calendars, um, transitioning those students from all parts of the, the, the county since we have these multiple um, avenues for students. With our implementation of STEM at a, in a sort of small way within, the, within a large traditional school, my question is really how to plant those STEM seeds in a larger school without promoting resentment or negativity in the non-STEM teachers and we can continue to spread it years down the road. Um, I think I was interested in um, when Dr. V. Coates was talking about integrating the arts into STEM education um, and I, I thought that was a really interesting concept and I would love to hear more ways about how schools are doing that regularly. Um, I'm interested in how to best assist our teachers with retooling because they are going to have to go through a major paradigm shift to enter into this way of thinking and to convince students that this is uh, as valuable or more valuable than that test score that they're going to get. It will effectively change that. I would like to know more about college readiness attributes and assessment that are research-based, ready to go. I'll be outside the door after the session. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I actually would like to know more about two things that are maybe somewhat um, related. Uh, I was very impressed with the problem solutions that pe uh, students came up with. And so I'd like to know how industry is learning about possible solutions that could actually help them either make money or save money that they would be really interested in, because I'm a businessman as well as an educator. And the other thing, I asked some of the students about their careers as a result of all these problems they're working on. Uh, so how is the school helping them understand what careers they might want to go into? I spent a year in dental school finding out I didn't want to be a dentist, <laughs> okay? And, People shouldn't have to do that. <laughs> Great. So. Oh, sorry. Um, I'd like to know more about opportunities to collaborate with other schools on STEM projects for students. I'd like to, to tag on to the comment up here about uh, changing STEM to STEAM because I really think that when you leave the arts out, whether it's language arts, whether it's theater or music or dance, that you're leaving out a huge part of the STEM experience, the thinking outside the box, the being able to come up with new ideas, be innovative, and connect on many levels. Our question is more so from a, a district and a school perspective. When you talk about strategic planning, how do you plan a model of secession so if your teachers do leave, can the endeavor live in the school and in the school district? When and how will standardized testing match authentic assessment? Good question. As a first year STEM elementary school, I'd like to find out how other 
elementary schools are incorporating STEM? Because most of this boils down to money and finance, and I'm really interested in what um, strategies you all could offer for successfully recruiting businesses to buy and the industries to buy in and to partner with the schools. If you all have some initial ways of helping us n to know how to go out and recruit, I think that would be important. Our table wanted to know more about how do rural counties start programs like we've started at Southern High School here in Durham? Yeah. Right. We've done it. Great lightning round. I cannot resist. I have to address the A. Okay? I have to tell you, you're right. We would never want the arts to be anywhere but front and center in a child's life for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is the cognitive and the neurocognition involved. STEM, if it's done not as an S with a period, T period, E period, M, but STEM has only the possibility of driving using the design process. It can't be done without the arts. So I appreciate you highlighting it. But I'm going to say to you, what you want to push is the process of design. Those issues that spawn problems, that have multiplicity of pathways to solve, that you prototype, and that you use everybody's talent to imagine in, an innov in quote, innovative ways. And ingen ingenuity, that's a good, important word as well, is STEM. So when you talk about school, the nation is moving to saying at least STEM. Every school, whether it's a STEM school or not, ought to be at least STEM. And if you say that and you think about it, it's an invitation to figure out where the arts go, how design's there, where, the, how does, uh, we were just talking at lunch today, there are, I think, eight STEM schools across the country teaching Mandarin Chinese in their fab lab. Neat way to teach Mandarin Chinese. And Deb, you probably have 15 more examples across the country of how, of how this all works. So these are fabulous questions. New Schools was quickly writing these down, so quite important. And what we'd like you to do, if you don't mind, would be for you to leave your cards at the table. But we're not done. We have homework. So in ties, we always say it, it's been a worthwhile time to spend together if we can challenge ourselves to do something gainful and smart and to truly make what we've had together in the last couple of days um, the, the beginning of a collaborative. You do that because you have something to do together, because our voices are, have, grow in importance together. So we have a challenge for you. And it's not just my challenge. Robin's at the, at the core of this as well with me. So first, follow up with one person or institution that you met during the conference. You have, you have business cards galore, or you wrote down names. And on the website anyway, you can get all the participants. You have to do this. You have to follow up. It is, we're go this is part of homework, and we're all very good students. The second, take one focused item and work with your school or institution to design its implementation. Take something you heard that you've never done before that you can actually work with your school or institution in a design process, in a design way, to bring in your own way to your institution or school that would never have happened if you hadn't been here. So at ties, we always say there are but-fors that we always look for. But for this conference, you would not have that knowledge, you wouldn't have the partnership, and you wouldn't have done this with your own group. Speak about the tenets of scaling STEM to your colleagues at an organized event over the next six months and tweet your reflection on that experience. It is fine for all of us to get up here and who live our lives steeped in STEM it's another thing when somebody asks you what you did today or what you did the last two days. Can you actually bring together some kind of small event 
and talk about what you just experienced. It's a challenge to you. It can be a small thing. But once you get your feet wet, then that kind of conversation is something that you can't give up because those around you find you as, um, as an expert as much as any, any one of us. And the final challenge is that you need to find one thing that you can say to the rest of us that you're doing that we might all sample. So it's, I say, what else should we now do together? And that's an invitation to keep the tweets up, to keep the emails flowing, to start and continue the idea of collaboration and network. In my session yesterday, I said, collaboration is not a natural act. Enlightened self-interest is. But we have to collaborate. You're only as good in collaboration as filling your own needs in order to collaborate and give to others. So you have four homework pieces. And we didn't write it down for you. It will go up on the conference website so that you can see this and you know what you have to do. We are not going to grade this. This is a constructivist notion. We, are, we want you to grow your understanding from where you are, right? All those good things that we always say about to our students. But we do want you to know that this becomes your professional community as in addition to where you are and where you do your work. And we would love to be supportive of helping you with all of this. So it's a little early, which is just great considering the time you've spent. I do, I do want you to leave the cards if that would, be help, that would be okay with you because it would be helpful to new schools. But I want to take a moment and acknowledge the kind of experience, the organization that it takes to bring this kind of experience to all of us. The Student STEM Symposium offers